I'll talk about a few examples in terms of things that you need to think about and that brands need to think about. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is put my remarks in context. Um, I'm not an agency person or a brand person. I'm an engineer. I'm, I'm a communications person. And um, when all you have a ha is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Uh, and so I see the world in, in, in uh, terms of communication networks. And what's actually happening in communications over the last 10 years and for the next 10 to 20 years ahead of us is that the network is becoming ubiquitous. It's expanding around the globe to all people and eventually all the things in our lives that we care about, which I call the Anywhere Network. But what that's bringing us is a vastly different kinds of connections, connections between people, as we observed uh, in the groundswell metaphor, uh, but also new kinds of connections with software. So the software industry is undergoing a tremendous uh, a shattering change in the next 20 years. Uh, new uh, economic uh, ecosystems, new players, new power, it's a revolution, and I always say it crowns new kings. And so very different equation for who's in control of this uh, global network. But very importantly, many new kinds of devices and many new kinds of consumers. Uh, two new kinds of consumers, actually. Uh, new kinds of consumers like those in Ghana, in this village, but who have never been connected to anything in their lives, the three billion people that have yet to make their first telephone call. But also new kinds of consumers in that we're being released, we're being untethered in our lives and turned into anywhere consumers. And we can take our experiences with us anywhere we go. So this anywhere revolution is the context I have for asking the question, what is the role of a brand in a mobile environment? So if I ask myself, who's the slave in the new mobile environment? The answer, if I look at Yankee Group's own uh, quant uh, survey work with consumers, uh, is pretty straightforward. We asked a group of uh, North American consumers recently this question. On a typical day, how much time do you spend doing the following things on your mobile? So here's a distribution across a bunch of activities you see on the bottom. Email, instant messaging, browsing the internet, listening to music, watching TV or video, playing games, social networking. And the colors represent the amount of time anybody says they spend doing it one to five minutes on the far left, and finally, more than an hour a day. These are the number of respondents out of our survey that said they do these things more than an hour a day. So I ask you, who's the slave in the mobile environment? We are. All of you who can't put these down while we're having this discussion, even though the connectivity in this building stinks. Right? <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> so it's consumers who have enslaved themselves, ourselves, to mobile experiences that are getting better all the time. Um, and the role of brands in this is very straightforward if you look at one more piece of data. And that is uh, the answer to this question. How we, as same group of consumers, how do you expect to pay for these experiences? So mobile operators are moving like madmen to try to create new things that appeal to consumers. They aren't the only people, but they would like to monetize all of our addictions to our mobile devices by selling us more stuff than just the minutes and the messages that they sell us today. So we asked a group of consumers, um, for each of the following activities, text messaging, photo messaging, video, push to talk, text alerts, and game downloads, how do you want to pay? And uh, so they get a couple of options. Pay a fee, receive some advertising, pay an amount every time I use it, receive advertising and pay nothing, and I don't know. And so the two colors you need to look at are the brownish color and the mustardy color. Because those are people that want advertising to subsidize their experience. Why? Because advertising subsidizes every other experience they have, from watching baseball to consuming more traditional media. They expect it, and the economics of mass media support that. And how do mobile operators make that happen? Not selling advertising about their services, but involving brands in the conversation with consumers. So we've enslaved ourselves 
and the mobile networks that want to create experiences for us need brands to help pay for the experience. <coughs> so the opportunity is, is more than that, actually. That's, that's today. But I just want to point something out. Mobile phones are already the most plentiful electronic devices that have ever been made. So there are three billion, roughly, in service today, and only half a billion computers in the world. In just a few years, there will be six billion <coughs> phones. But it actually gets better, because it presages an explosion of more pathways. And that's because connectivity is coming to many devices besides our mobile phones. And the Kindle and other forms of e-readers is one of the ones that's getting a lot of our attention this year. But it's actually expanding tremendously. And this is an example, this is a product I own. You haven't seen it yet. There it is. Everybody knows what this is. It's actually a connected umbrella. Has anybody actually ever seen this particular product? You have? You are the first person who has ever raised their hand when I've asked that question. Do you work for Ambient Devices? No. Okay, wow. Did you, you have it? Was that one? Wired? It was in Wired Magazine? Yeah. Yeah. You can actually buy this in the U.S. in Brookstone. And it has a pretty neat feature. It's really just an, umbre an umbrella. That's the only thing it does. But uh, it has a special little feature on the tip, and that is a light, and it glows blue when it's going to rain. Where I am. So it knows where I am, and it gets the weather forecast several times a day. And if precipitation is predicted, it turns the light on. It doesn't have a browser, it doesn't have a keyboard, it doesn't have a printer, it doesn't sell advertising. But it makes my umbrella more umbrella-ish. <laughs> the point of an umbrella is to keep me dry. If I don't have it with me, it can't be umbrella-ish. But if I have it, it's more likely to be able to do its job. So connectivity in the service of functional devices, tools in our lives, is coming because the costs are dropping. And if you think about it, it's really no different than the electrification of the tools in 19th century life. So just look around your kitchen, and you know, your electric coffee pot was, was, uh, is the, uh, has as an ancestor a, a, a percolator that was sat on a stove and your Cuisinart or your blender had a, a fork or a whisk as its uh, uh, ancestor. We eventually coupled motors and our electricity with all the tools in our lives, and they became much more useful and more convenient to us. That's what's happening with connectivity. So we're having an explosion in mobile devices, and it's just beginning. It's coming now because the networks are good enough, the costs are dropping, both to connect the devices and to use the network. So the explosion in digital pathways that have to do with mobility is exponential because it's a growth in the number of people, it's a growth in the number of things, and in the number of activities that we use these devices for. So here's the real reason why brands have an imperative to become masters of mobility. And that is that these digital pathways are the way to talk to consumers, all of these pathways. Diffusion is the name of the game in terms of mobility. So you must master that. So there are definitely some challenges. It, we could spend days talking about them. It's worth just acknowledging them to move on. Uh, the first is that right now, if we return to a discussion of mobile phones, there are way too many platforms. And for the developers of mobile experiences, this is an incredibly complicated factor because it reduces the leverage you get from any investment of effort. You can only reach uh, users of BlackBerry Curves model 8820, and then if you they release an 8830, then you have to revise it, right? So that's that's really painful. It's getting better, but it's painful. An even bigger problem is the mobile network operators themselves, because in in many ways you want to partner with them. They need you, right? They need brands, but they see themselves as guardians of a castle and not as uh, hosts of a hotel. And uh, so their mentality has not yet shifted to a mode that makes them really easy to work with. It is what it is. Uh, finally, um, it is a new medium. 
And every new medium goes through an early period where our ideas of how to use it are so trapped in our thinking about previous media 